couldn't come up here for these two weeks, I'd probably go bananas. Hey, Mary, bring us a couple more beers, would you? Mom, can we go play in the canyon? We'll be back before dinner, I promise. No, it's almost dinner time now, and it's really too near dark for you guys to go wandering off. Oh, come on, Mom. It's not very far. Just over here in the rocks. Well, you'll have to ask your father. Okay. Hey, wait a minute. Here, take these to your father. And no sips. Well, Oh, thanks, boys. Thanks. Dad, can me and Doug go play up in the canyon for a few minutes? Doug says he knows where there's a real-life skeleton. A real live skeleton, huh? <laughs> okay, but you make sure you're back in time for dinner. We will. Thanks, Dad. Did you really see a skeleton? Uh-huh, and a real one, too. Oh, my man. Oh, you did not. I was here with you, remember? And I didn't say anything. This was this morning before you got up. I got up early to catch some lizards. I climbed up this ledge. Who's just laying there? What ledge? Up there. Oh, there's nothing up there but rocks. I don't see any skeleton. You can't see it from down here. I told you, it's on a ledge. Okay, I'll bet you five dollars there's nothing up there. And if you're wrong, you better pay off. Don't worry, you'll see. Come on, hurry up. It's getting dark fast. They'll be mad if we're not back in time for dinner. Maybe we should wait until tomorrow. I don't like it out here in the dark. I figured you'd try to back out of it. Now remember, we made a bet. Now come on. Okay, I'm coming. Did you see anything else up here? Besides the skeleton? I didn't get a chance to see. Why not? Because I was scared. Oh, there's nothing up there. You're just trying to keep me from winning the bet. Okay, then you go and look. Uh-uh, we're in this 50-50. And besides, the old skeleton can't hurt you anyway. Now, come on. Oh, hi, Tom. Anything good today? Morning, Howard. I'm not sure. I've got a letter here from the Mojave County Sheriff's Department. Oh, what'd you do? Murder somebody or forget to pay a parking ticket? <laughs> oh, hell. Another one from the phone company. I thought I paid that thing. Well, I'll be damned. Oh, bad news? Oh, good. They need an authority on rattlesnakes and they're willing to pay me $200 to go out there and consult with them tomorrow. What would I do with my classes, though? Oh, the hell with your classes. Let your teaching assistant take them. That's what they're there for. Besides, the university doesn't pay $200 for teaching three classes. <laughs> That's for sure. Hey, um, what's the latest word on your federal grant? Well, it's been approved, but the funds haven't come through. And, of course, we've only got 10 days before the spring break. Well, I'll be glad when you get a lab of your own and take all those snakes out of the bio lab. You get the willies walking through there at night. What are you worried about, Howard? Rattlesnakes give you warning before they strike. Well, I think I'll stick to working with birds. They don't strike at all. Huh? I'll see you later. All right. Good evening, Sam. Your cart always gives you away. Well, this is no cart. This is my security blanket on wheels. You know something? I don't like working around Dr. Parkinson's snakes. 
I don't blame you. Another late night tonight, huh? Yeah, I got to finish up some uh, data on an experiment. Are you still working on the one where the pigeons go through the maze? Uh, no, this one's a little bit different. Uh, come on in, I'll show you. Over here, we have some pigeons living under normal conditions. This group over here has been subjected to variations in light and temperature. One day it's hot and dark, the next is cold and light. And this chaotic type of environment creates stress. Well, so far, the results indicate that the birds under stress eat a lot more. In, in human terms, they get fat. I could have told you that ten years ago. Oh? Yeah, I'm married to one of those fat pigeons. <laughs> well, hopefully, these studies of pigeons will lead to a cure of obesity in humans. I hope it's before I end up with a 500-pound canary. <laughs> Has uh, Dr. Parkinson been in yet? Not yet. But you ever go home? Yeah, not when there's work to be done. Maybe eight hours a day behind a broom and a gold watch after 30 years isn't so bad. At least I get to go home. Of course, I don't make as much money as you. Well, if you're measured by per hour, I'm sure you make more than I. Don't let my wife hear you say that. Or she'll figure I'm actually rich and switch from french fries to imported chocolate. See you tomorrow, Professor. Good night, Sam. <laughs> yeah, that wasn't so bad, was it, huh? Hey, you know you're getting fat, huh? Four more ounces, Mabel. Hey, hey. Pleasingly plump, huh? still here? Uh, Howard, don't move. One of my cobras is out of his cage and he's right behind you now. I want you to stand perfectly still. I'm going to move in behind him and try and distract his attention. Just don't make any sudden moves. Pick him up. Pick him up. Howard, keep those birds still. I'm having trouble keeping myself still. Breathe, Howard. Do as I say. I said freeze. Tell her, I think I'm going to pass out. You do, and you'll be dead in a matter of minutes, Howard. My knees are getting weak. Concentrate on something else. Concentrate on your pigeons. Ah. Hurry. Hold it, Howard. <laughs> you, you got him? Almost. Easy, baby. Easy. I got him. now, Howard. Come on, Howard. Howard, are you all right? Yeah, I think so. But I'd feel a lot better if you'd get some locks in those snake cages. Or better yet, take them with you to the desert when you go. By the way, when are you going? In the morning. Come on, I'll buy you a cup of coffee. You better make that a drink. A double. Then they told me that you were the man to see about rattlesnakes, and since you were in L.A., I thought you might be able to help us. Well, I hope I can, Sheriff. 
Frankly, I was expecting to see some dried-up old desert rat with snake bite scars all over his body. <laughs> Harry, open up the ball, will you? No, I've been bitten twice, and believe me, Sheriff, that's enough for me. It doesn't hurt to be overcautious when you're dealing with any kind of venomous snakes. After seeing these two kids we brought in, I sure agree. There was an old man we found in the desert last month I wish you could have seen. All swollen with the same type snake bites as these. At least we thought they were snake bites. Maybe you can tell better after you look at these. Strictly closed coffin stuff. We've been holding off releasing their bodies to their families for burial until you had a look at them. Mind if we get some air? Sure. Thanks, Harry. Sorry about the smell in that place. No, it wasn't that so much as seeing those kids all disfigured like that. I'll tell you something, Sheriff. I've handled hundreds of snake bite cases, but nothing like this. Then it definitely was snake bite, huh? What was it, a rattler? Well, judging from the breadth and depth of the punctures, I'd say it was definitely a rattlesnake, but uh, more likely a number of them. Isn't it kind of strange, those kids being bitten so many times? And what about that old man? Well, it's not at all uncommon for a dozen or even a hundred rattlesnakes together in one place, but they usually only do it during hibernation. Is there a map of where the bodies were found? Yeah, sure. Now, let's see. Yeah, we found the old man right about in here, and the kids around there. And you didn't find anything unusual around where the old man was? Coffee? Thanks. Now, one thing did seem strange. He had a horsehair rope around his bedroll. You know, I didn't think a snake would cross that. <laughs> That's just an old miner's tale, Sheriff. We've tried that stuff in the lab, and it doesn't bother him at all. But what is unusual is the fact that he apparently was attacked in his sleep, which is highly unlike the behavior of a rattlesnake or any other reptile, for that matter. Why is that? Well, reptiles just aren't naturally aggressive. Even a rattlesnake won't attack unless you get too close. You know how far away you can hear the rattles. I'm surprised the old man didn't hear them. I've just never heard of a rattlesnake making an unprovoked attack on a man before. Well, it sure looks that way. I'll tell you, I'd like to take a look at that canyon where the kids were found. You think we might be able to get out there today? Well, I'm going to be tied up in a meeting in about a half an hour, but one of my deputies will take you anywhere you want to go. Well, that'd be great. Maybe we'll find some more clues. Well, I sure hope we get rid of those snakes so we can have a little peace around here. You know, if it isn't the Board of Supervisors on my back, it's the newspapers hounding me for a story. I know what you mean. Well, I'll do my best. I think it's the right road, but it's hard to tell from the map. I thought you guys knew this area inside out. Not me. I've just been on the force a year. Grew up in Alabama. What are you doing out here in the middle of nowhere? Never heard of a Mojave County officer being shot. And the money's not bad. So here I am. Got a good-looking wife, two kids, the car's paid off, and we just bought a boat. Sounds like you got it made. Yeah. Well, it has its up and downs. Hey, here's the canyon up here on the left. You think you can get in there with this car? Yeah, most of the way. Exactly what are you looking for? Anything looks out of the ordinary. Yeah, this whole thing looks out of the ordinary. Like, like some nightmare. The old lady screaming out of her mind and the old man just sitting there staring off into space. Anybody check that ledge up there? No, but there wasn't any snake around here that we could see. All right, I'm going to have a look up there. Why don't you check in all around here and see what you can find?
Whoa, man. It's only me. Sorry. You ready to go? Yeah. Find anything? No, nothing. You? I found this piece of cloth up on that ledge. Now, it looks like it's got blood stain on it. If the blood type matches those kids, then we know they must have been killed up there and rolled down to where the parents found them. Yeah, but you didn't find any snakes. Well, I figure they must have run across a rattlesnake den. What? I always thought that the dens were underground, you know, like the snake pit. Usually, but like last summer, is this water skier in Texas? Lost had gone into a turn. By the time the boat came around to pick him up, he was lying face down dead. Must have fallen into a nest of Delta water moccasins. Because he had snake bites all over his body, hundreds of them. Mm. Sure know how to run a guy's weekend. What's that? What are you doing this weekend? Water skiing. Wake up, boy. Dad, are you in there?
right now to compensate for the lack of the cochlea, the tongue picks up acute auditory vibrations and sends them to the bottom of the mouth, to the Jacobson organ. You can see. Well, there. We'll take a break and get back to the auditory system in a minute. Herpetology, Tom Parkinson. Yeah, Tom, listen, this is Sheriff Yates. Oh, hi, Sheriff. Yeah, something's come up out at Frank Samuel's place. The barn's been burned, the whole family's been killed, and even the livestock. Guess what? Looks like the snakes again. I've been talking to the Board of Supervisors about hiring you to help us finish up this case, uh, if you're interested. Oh, I'm interested, all right. What would I have to do? Well, listen, you're really going to have to get on top of this thing and find out where those snakes are so we can get rid of them. Of course, they're going to want a written report on what you come up with and some photos for documentation. Well, that seems like a lot to do. I'm going to be tied up with classes here until Friday, and even then, I don't know whether I can handle it. I'm not very good with a camera. Well, say we got you uh, somebody to handle photography and uh, help you with the paperwork. When do you think you could start? Mm, Friday morning at the earliest. Classes are over Thursday, and uh, then we've got 10 days off for the spring break. Good. Okay, if there aren't any problems, then I'll look for you in my office on Friday, say, about, what, noon? Yeah, that's fine with me. Okay, thank you, Sheriff. Bye-bye. All right, let's get back to that auditory system. Hi, Rogers. How are you? Hey, how you doing? All right. Sheriff in? Well, he should be here any minute now. But now, if you've got an appointment, he usually runs consistently seven minutes late. Yeah, I used to have a watch like that. <laughs> hey, how was your water skiing last weekend? Great skiing, man. And no water moccasins. Glad to hear it. Hi. Is Sheriff Yates in? I'm Ann Bradley, the photographer. Not my photographer. Well, all I know is that it has something to do with research documentation in the desert. Oh, well, I see you two have met. Uh, Tom, Ann, come to my office and we'll go over everything. Sheriff, the mayor called twice. I want you to call him right back. And Mrs. Carmichael... Okay, okay, I'll take care of it. Okay. You can see what it's been like around here. And... I told you we had a job for you on the desert. Now, you'll be working with Dr. Parkinson here. Now, he's with the University of California helping us to investigate a series of accidents. Now, he's going to be in complete charge of this phase of the investigation, and he'll fill you in on all the details, okay? Now, I uh, hope you don't mind roughing it. Do I have a choice? Not really. <laughs> there won't be any motels where you're going. Besides, we're, we're very short on funds. In fact, we can't afford either one of you, really. But Dr. Parkinson here has agreed to work for a nominal fee, and uh, they tell me that he's the best in his field. What is his field? Herpetology. What's that? Reptiles. I specialize in rattlesnakes. How charming. That's what this thing is all about. Now, Tom has all the details, and he'll fill you in, okay? Look, uh, Sheriff, can I talk to you for a minute? Outside? Look, Tom, if it's about... What it's I important. Okay, I'll meet you in the hallway. Be right back, Ann. I can't take that girl out there. I mean, I've got to have somebody that can at least take care of themselves. Look, Tom, look, I know how you feel, and I agree with you, but this is the only way I could swing it. Look, you know we're short on funds. Every damn women's lip group is on our backs about job equality, and this girl has worked for us before. And she's really strictly a pro. Look, she spent two years in Vietnam as a press photographer. And she'll be able to handle herself okay. Yeah, well, I hope you're right. Believe me, she's a better photographer than most of the men we've used. And a hell of a lot prettier, if I may. Sure. You just came in. Uh-oh. More trouble. A glider pilot came down near Silver Lake last night. They have at the hospital here in town. He, uh, he says he was attacked. Attacked? By snakes. So then I realized that if I stayed with the press, I'd be doing the same thing ten years from now. Because all the promotions and executive positions are held down by men. Oh, come on now. I can't believe that they're all... Sure, there are office jobs for women, like typing, taking shorthand. Or do you want to work at a switchboard eight hours a day saying, Hello, Mr. Jones. Just a moment, Mr. Jones. Uh, excuse me. Could you tell me where David Ellister's room is? Certainly. That's room 148, just down the hall, sir. Thanks. Dr. Chopra, Dr. Chopra. Now, those women seem very happy in their jobs. Sure. How many men can you find to change sheets or empty bedpans? Oh, come off it. Tell me, doctor, how many professors in your department are women? 
None, but that doesn't mean there couldn't be. See, you're just like the rest of them. The reason there aren't any women in good jobs is because the jobs don't exist. Yeah, well, I'm sorry, I can't agree with that. Of course you can't, because it's men like you who make it that way. And boy, men make all the choices. Oh, was that right? Yes. Well, let me tell you something, young lady. If I had my choice in the matter, you'd be sitting on your liberated ass back in that sheriff's department instead of out here with me where you don't belong in the first place. Look, I'm sorry. I, I didn't mean to blow up at you like that. But what I meant was you have your job and you should be happy. Oh, I'm happy. Dr. Levinson. Excuse me. You David Alistair? Sure am. I'm Tom Parkinson. Hi, Tom. Ann Bradley. Hello. Well, hello. You two with the press or something? No, we're working with the sheriff's department. We're investigating some snake bite cases. And I understand you were attacked by snakes. God, you'd better believe it. There must have been 50 of them. Well, could you tell us exactly what happened? And Miss Bradley will take notes. That is, if she doesn't mind. Well, I'd been airborne most of the afternoon. About 6.30, I radioed in for a tow, because I didn't have enough lift to make it back to the field. Oh, I set her down, opened the canopy, got out. Walked back by the tail, and about that time I heard some kind of buzzing noises, like the, those mariachi, you know, those things they use in the Latin bands. And then I saw the snakes coming along the ground right towards me. And there were dozens of them. Well, I turned and ran for the cockpit, but there was one coiled on the ground in front of me, and I had to jump over him to get in. And I felt a sharp pain in my leg, and I knew he got me. But I dove into the cockpit, because by then the rest of them were right on my tail. My leg felt heavy, and as I pulled it in, I could see he was still hanging on to me with his fangs buried in my calf. I, I grabbed a hold of him, but he hung on like a vice. And then he let go, and he spun around, trying to bite me in the hand, too. He was thrashing his body all over the cockpit. I, I finally got him outside, threw him as hard as I could. He hit the ground, and I closed the canopy. What did you do then? Luckily, the tow plane arrived a few minutes later, brought me in. Boy, my leg felt like it was on fire. You were really lucky. You say there were 50 snakes? Oh, <clears throat> well, maybe not 50, but 20 or 30 anyway. They were all over out there. Tell me, did they move in an S-shaped manner or kind of like a corkscrew? <laughs> Hell, I don't know. What do you need to know that for? Well, it'll tell us whether we're dealing with a diamondback or a sidewinder. Oh, yeah. Well, no, I'd say they seem to come pretty much straight towards me. It's hard to tell. It was almost dark. I couldn't even describe the one on my leg, except that it was a rattlesnake and a mean one. Well, that's all right. You've been a big help to us. Appreciate it. Oh, uh, one last thing. I wonder if you could point out on this map where the glider landed. Sure. Uh, I was right there. Well, I'll tell you one thing. If I miss the field again after dark, I'm going to stay in the cockpit until the tow plane arrives. I know what you mean. Well, thanks again. Appreciate it. Glad to help. Say, if you'd like to go gliding sometime, just let me know. We'll do that. Thank you. Good. I recorded the conversation. Did you want any pictures? No, I don't think so. Excuse me, sir. I have a form for you to sign. Well, we know where to get a hold of him if you do. Yeah, providing he doesn't kill himself on that glider of his. Yeah, or get attacked by any more snakes. Did you believe those things he was saying? Well, I believe he's telling the truth, all right. It's the logic behind the attack that bothers me. I want to check out that area where the glider EKG lands. If we can get technician. out there before it gets dark. EKG technician. You know what? What's that? I don't think we're going to make it by dark. <laughs> I think you're right. It's not too much farther, though. You see those big rocks up ahead? Yeah. Is that where the glider came down? No, I thought we'd set up camp here tonight and check that out first thing in the morning. Well, it's not exactly the Hilton, but at least there won't be any smog. Or anything else, for that matter. Finally. Do you know I called your office over four hours ago? 
I'm sorry, but my partner's been sick and I've been gone all day. What seems to be the problem? Well, there's absolutely no hot water. I can't even take a bath. Sounds like the pilot may have gone out. Which way is your water heater? I think it's in there. I don't know, really. I I'm not very mechanical. My husband used to take care of these sort of things before we got divorced. Oh, I'm sorry. I mean, I'm about the divorce and all. You need to feel sorry for me. We never got along anyway. I'm probably better off without him. He's trying to earn enough money to get out of here and move back to San Diego. Mom will be mad at you if you don't turn it off. I don't care. I want to see it. David, I told you to turn that TV off and get ready for bed. Just a few more minutes. Excuse me a minute. You got that fixed yet? No, it looks like your regulator valve. Great. How much is that going to cost? Well, they're not too bad. About seven fifty plus labor. It'll probably be about twenty dollars altogether. I'll have to get under the house though to fix it. So, uh, is there an access someplace? Well, there's some sort of thing out back. If that's what you mean. Okay, it'll take a while to fix this thing. So, if you want to get some hot water, you better heat something up on the stove. My things are still wet from last night. Well, don't worry. The sun will dry it out in no time at all. I believe it. Have you been up long? About an hour. I want to get the stuff set up before it got too warm. You take coffee? Yes, thank you. You know, it's really beautiful out here. 
Uh, yeah, you should have seen these hills about two weeks ago. They were just covered with wildflowers for as far as you could see. Hey, I bet you're hungry. How'd you like some bacon and eggs? That is, if you brought any. Oh, I brought everything, all right. But I wasn't so sure you could cook. I'm not so hot myself. Are you kidding? I was the oldest of seven kids. So when my father died and my mother had to go to work, I learned to do all the cooking. Oh, I'm no Betty Crocker, but my bacon and eggs are pretty good. Well, with that kind of a childhood, I'm sure you're better than I am. You know what? I guess really bothered me was seeing my mother working in a factory for minimum wage. When I was little, I remember holding her hands, and they were so soft. But after a few years of working with those machines, they became calloused. And it seemed every night she came home, she aged another year. Well, I don't think you'll ever have to worry about that. I hope not. Oh, well, I don't want to be an old maid, but I don't want to give up my career either. Maybe you won't have to. You really like freelancing, don't you? <laughs> I love it. Oh, you can't starve in between jobs, though. Well, speaking of starving, we better eat and check out where that glider landed. We're both going to lose our jobs with the sheriff's department. Okay. <laughs> Well, this looks like the place. Why don't you check around over in there? Here's some tire tracks. Yeah, there are a lot of footprints, too. I think this is the place, all right. So I was hoping to find some snake tracks. What do they look like? Well, they're little swirly lines, kind of like a riverbed. I sure don't see any. That's the trouble. First good rain or windstorm that comes along, they get washed out. What are you doing? I was just noticing. Look here. Mm -hmm. This is where we are. Now, the kids were found right about here. And the old man was over here. Farmhouse is up somewhere in here. Mm -hmm. Now, if you draw a connecting line between all these points, look where it winds up. Mm, Fort Walton. But what's that? It's an old army base that they don't use much anymore. I doubt if we'll find anything out, but maybe we ought to check it out anyway. Somebody might have seen something unusual. Okay, but how about a picture first, huh? And a smile? Sheriff's Department, and I'd like to see the commanding officer if possible. Now, that would be Colonel Stroud. Could I see your identification, please? Yeah. Well, I'm sorry, but no one's allowed on the base without a security clearance. But I could call his office, let him know you're here. Well, I'd appreciate that. Yeah, there's a Dr. Parkinson and a Miss Bradley to see the colonel. Uh, they're with the sheriff's department. Right, okay. You can find Colonel Stroud's office in Building N up ahead. Uh, you can park up there in front, but be sure not to go beyond that fence. That's a restricted area, okay? Okay, thanks a lot.
Ah, uh, you must be Dr. Parkins. Right. My assistant, Ann Bradley. How do you do? I understand you're with the Sheriff's Department? Well, not exactly. We've been hired by the Sheriff's Department, though, to investigate some cases of snake bite death. I see. Uh, you want to know about Billings? About who? Billings. Uh, Corporal Billings. Uh, my man who died of snake bite. Uh, isn't that why you're here? Well, frankly, Colonel, uh, the Sheriff never told us anybody had been killed here. We normally don't report any deaths to the civilian authorities unless it involves a crime or a civilian personnel. Well, tell me, did your medical officer find more than one snake bite on the man's body? You didn't have to be a doctor to see that. He looked like a pincushion. Well, didn't that seem rather unusual to you? A lot of things that go on seem unusual to me, and, and I'm sure no commanding officer likes losing any of his men. But it does happen. I lost one of my officers two months ago. Took his own life with a shotgun. Not very nice either, but what can you do? How long ago was this man Billings killed? Two weeks ago, on the 22nd. So I guess his body's been shipped home? Of course. But if there's anything you need to know, I'm sure you can find it in his uh, 4211. 4211? Form 4211, certificate of death. Not much to represent a man's life, but that's what we have. You're sure he died of snake bite? Well, it sure as hell wasn't the flu. It was unusual, the number of bites he had. Must have been nearly a dozen. You know exactly where the body was found? About a half a mile from the base, almost due east. Well, now the time of death indicated here was just after midnight. What was he doing out there at that hour? Can I offer you a drink? Pure alcohol. Driest martinis in town. Oh, thanks. Uh, the colonel probably wouldn't want you to know this, but Billings had a girl in Barstow and apparently had been going over the fence several nights a week. I still don't see how he got past the patrols, or I'd go myself. Patrols? Security patrols. They patrol the perimeter to make sure no one gets into the base at night. Or out of it either. Last year, they caught two kids taking parts off a truck. Someone even tried to steal a helicopter. That reminds me, I was going to ask Colonel Stroud about borrowing a helicopter. What do you think my chances would be? Not very good, really, but it depends on his mood. Well, there's the phone. See for yourself. Just dial 236. Colonel, is Tom Parkinson again? Yeah, I'm in their office now. Did you find out anything? Paul seems to know what the other cases we've had. They're all multiple snake bites. Well, I hope you can get rid of those snakes. You could be a big help to us if you would, Colonel. Well, I always try to help the civilian authorities when I can. What can I do? Well, I need a helicopter and a pilot for about an hour to check some spots. You'd save us days of climbing and driving. Well, it's not a general practice to lend equipment to civilians. But I think we'd make an exception in this case. Thank you. I really appreciate that, Colonel. Go down to the landing pad. Uh, I'll have the uh, duty pilot sent out right away. I'll get right down there, and thank you very much again. Bye-bye. Well, looks like I caught him in a good mood. How do I get down to that landing pad? Uh, just go out the door and to the right. You can't miss it. Okay. What about me? I'm not going? Well, why don't you stay here with uh, Captain Delaney, that is, if he doesn't mind. Mind? Listen, Professor. Any time you want to leave me alone with a sexy-looking young thing like Miss Bradley here, fine with me. Well, I thought maybe she could photograph the death certificate in the area where Billings was found. If you don't mind taking her out there. Well, I'd be glad to, but I can't desert the infirmary. That's okay. If you'll give me directions, I'll just take the jeep. You don't mind going alone? No, I don't mind. All right. See you later. Thank you very much. Okay, we'll need a map. Now, this is the base road, here. You follow it out until you see a gully. Follow the gully out about a half a mile.
condensation up here, huh? <laughs> you like that, huh? Yeah. I think if we head out in this direction, we'll pass over my campsite. And there's a road about three miles out. That's 127. Let's follow it out to the end. There's a canyon out there. Well, this thing really moves out. Oh, we have faster ones. Of course, uh, you got the fastest pilot in the West. <laughs> I believe it. on that canyon. You want to land in it? Now let's just circle around slowly if you can. You got it. I don't think there's anything around here. Why don't we just head on due east, okay? We'll check that out. I don't know what it is you're looking for. Man, there's nothing out here but sand and mesquite. Hey, I got seven more months to do, and then I never want to see any sand again. Unless maybe at the beach. You gonna give up flying too? Are you kidding? I'm just giving up the uniforms and the regulations. Hell, man, I'm the best pilot they got here. Like last month, they get this big emergency rush job to bury this container out here. You see, uh, George, we want you to treat this thing like it was an egg. Man, I feathered those blades, set that thing down so soft, didn't even know it was moved. something about burying something out here? Yeah, but uh, it was further west of here. Well, what was it you buried? <laughs> you got me. Whatever it was, it's under about a ton of concrete now. What do you mean? There was this old mine shaft they put it in. I lowered it down in and uh, they covered it up with cement. Could you fly me over there? Well, I can try, but uh, it won't do much good. It's all covered over by now and uh, we'd never find it. Of course, I'm sure Colonel Stroud can tell you where it is, though. Okay, well, I'll tell you, I want to check a farm out that's out by Hinkley, and then we can head back in, all right? All right. Well, if there was a snake in there before, it's gone now. Are you sure it's gone? Positive. But if you want to ride, I'll be glad to take you anywhere you want. No, that's okay. Thanks anyway. Probably just my imagination. I'd like to see Colonel Stroud. Well, I'm sorry, sir, but he's busy right now. That's all right. I'll wait. He may be busy for several hours. He asked not to be disturbed. Well, could you call him and tell him it's important? It'll just take a minute. Well, I can try. But he's not going to like this. 
Sir, Dr. Parkinson is back and insists on seeing you. Says it's important. All right, Sergeant, send him in. All right, you can go in. Now, look here, Parkinson. I've gone out of my way to help you, but when you come barging in here insisting on seeing me, I think you're overstepping your bounds. After all, this is a government facility. The Sheriff's Department has no jurisdiction here. It has when you're endangering the lives of civilians. Now, what are you talking about? Check the records. There's never been one civilian fatality or even an injury due to any of our aircraft or personnel. I'm talking about whatever it is you have buried in that mine shaft. Who told you about that? Well, it doesn't matter who told me or who's responsible. The point is, I want to know what's in that mine shaft because I have a feeling it may have something to do with these snake bite cases. Well, I don't see any connection. All we did was bury an old container in an uninhabited area. I think people would be glad to have that open mine shaft filled in before some kid fell into it. Exactly what was in that container? I'm sorry, that's classified information, but I can guarantee you there's no danger to anyone. Well, if it wasn't something dangerous, then why bury it in the first place? And why all the concrete? Well, I don't have to answer your questions, Parkinson. And I see no evidence of anything we've done here that would cause you to ask it. Colonel, 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 people have been killed, and I'm trying to find out why. Now, all I want to know is where that mine shaft is located and what it is that's buried there. It's not as if I'm some kind of spy or something. Sergeant, Dr. Parkinson is leaving. Would you please escort him to the gate? All right, I'll go. But don't think you've heard the last of this, because we're not going to be far away, and believe me, I'm going to find out what's going on around here. So then when I mentioned the mine shaft, he clammed right up as if he was scared or something. I think we ought to do a little probing around tomorrow if we can get back on that base. Captain Delaney might be able to help. He seemed pretty cooperative. I think he's cooperative because he likes you. Aha. Uh -huh. Do I detect a note of jealousy? Well, aren't you going to ask what we were doing while you were gone? Well, I hope you were taking some pictures or the sheriff's not going to be too happy. No, actually, we were having a torrid affair. He swept me right off my feet and we made wild, passionate love right there between the cotton swabs and the aspirin. <laughs> But we did it in the name of science, so I didn't think you'd mind. I don't mind, as long as he's your type. He's actually not my type at all. Did you know that his specialty was biomedicine? Really? Mm -hmm. Why would they put a biomed man way out here? Something strange about that base, too. All that security, and for what? Well, I did manage to get some pictures of those buildings they kept us out of. When we get back to camp, I'll process the film. Can you do that out here? Sure. I have a portable dark room that works great in a tent. There's only one drawback. What's that? You have to wait until it gets dark. <laughs> <laughs> you wanted to see me, sir? Yes, Hawkins. You were the duty helicopter pilot this morning, is that right? Yes, sir. And you took Dr. Parkinson up, is that right? Yes, sir. What I want to know is uh, exactly where did Dr. Parkinson want to go? Well, let's see. First, he had me circle this canyon at the end of 127. Then we flew east for a while, and he looked around. Uh, then we sat down on that farm that burned over near Hinckley and uh, came back. Do you know what he was looking for? No, sir. He didn't say, and I figured it was none of my business. Well, what about that old mine shaft? Did he ask about that? Yes, sir. I told him I didn't know where it was, and he should ask you about it. You know, Hawkins, divulging uh, classified information to civilians is a court-martial offense. He didn't divulge anything, sir. I just took him out and brought him back. Well, from now on, I think it would be a good idea if you refrain from talking to Dr. Parkinson at all, and to forget that there ever was a mine shaft. Now, I realize that you only have a few more months of active duty. And I'd hate to see you spend that time at a lesser rank. But it could happen. I'm sorry, sir, if I said anything wrong, but I won't let it happen again. I promise. Well, let's make sure of that, eh, Hawkins? Yes, sir. That's all, Hawkins. You can go. Yes, sir.
Hey, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to scare you. I was just watching your work. Look, it's bad enough being in here in the dark without having people sneak up behind you. Sorry, I just wanted to see these shots. I'm sorry. I didn't mean to yell at you. I guess I'm just starting to see snakes everywhere. Yesterday, I was sure there was one behind me. Where was that? When I was getting those pictures of where that soldier was killed. I got this feeling like... like someone is staring at you. Only there wasn't anyone there. Well, it was probably just a... No, it was a snake. I'm... I'm sure of it. It was like something evil watching me. And then it was in the Jeep. All right, now don't go getting all upset. I mean, maybe you did see a snake, but you weren't hurt, were you? No, I'm all right. Look, I guess I'm acting silly, but I just can't help it. I don't think you're silly at all. Now, it's been a long day, and tomorrow maybe even longer, so I'm going to zip you up in here, and you'll be perfectly safe. Okay? Okay. I'll see you in the morning. He said, if you're so smart, what the hell are you doing in the Army? I said, I wonder what the hell I'm doing here myself sometime. You know, I'll tell you, it's your beach combat duty. I'd like to get back to where there's some decent women, you know? Now, you wouldn't know a decent woman if one crawled up and bit you. Oh, yeah. At least I never saw you with one. Now, you better take it easy on this stuff. After all, you are driving. Don't worry. We can always take a taxi home. Besides, there's no one out here but us. And who's going to tell? Well, if we did catch somebody stealing a cactus or something, all they got to do is tell the colonel his patrol was juiced. Yeah, <laughs> cactus juice. <laughs> well, we haven't caught anybody yet, have we? No. Besides that, if we did get caught, at least we'd get off a night patrol. Yeah, we just might get on a little. What was that? I don't know. Something in the road. Felt like a tire blew. Damn. I told you to watch it. Hey, Woody. Hey, come here and look at this. That's flat, all right. Yeah, yeah, look. You see right here? Look at those little marks. Oh, we must have caught a board with nails or something in it. Man, I didn't see any board. You're going to say I'm crazy. You know all that talk about rattlesnakes around here? That looks just like a snake bite. Come on, no snake can bite through a tire. Man, they can bite through a boot. Oh, quit worrying and get the jack out. Uh... Here. Hey, you know, maybe we ought to call in for assistance. Hell no, it's only a flat tire. Come on, check the damn thing out. I'll get the lugs. Friday the 13th, too. <laughs> Boy, you're really something else. I used to think you were bad about all your damn superstitions. But snakes biting through an eight-ply tire, that really beats them all. Wait, let's get around. Hey, Woody. Hey, Woody. Woody. Uh. 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 Parkinson? Hmm? What? What is it? Did you come to the base right away, sir? Captain Delaney sent me to get you. What is he, crazy? It's only four o'clock. There's been an accident. Palmer and Woodley on security patrol. Looks like they've been killed by snakes. All right. Just give me a minute. What is it? What's going on? There's been another attack. Two soldiers this time. Maybe Stroud will listen to me now. You better get your stuff. we got to get out of here. Okay. Ah, oh, there you are. I'm sorry to wake you both up so early, but I thought you'd want to take a look at these men before I have to wake the colonel and tell him what happened. Just what did happen, you know? Not for sure, but it looks like they had a flat tire, stopped to fix it, and were hit before they could get away. 
Listen, you're not going to get in trouble for letting us in here again, are you? Look, don't worry about me. Let's just worry about finding whatever killed these men. All right, well, let's take a look at the bodies and get some pictures. Oh, my God, that poor man. I don't imagine he suffered much. The amount of venom in his blood, he probably died in a matter of seconds. Why is he so swollen? It's hematoma, like the swelling from a bruise. Rattlesnake venom always does that. It contains an enzyme that destroys the tissues and blood cells. How horrible. There are better ways to go, I suppose. The other man, Woodley, looks about the same. Captain, do you know the approximate time of death? About 0200. Now, it's 4.30 now. Do you think you could have a man take us out to where the bodies were found? Sure. Excuse me a minute. Hines, uh, I want you to take Dr. Parkinson and Miss Bradley to where you found Palmer and Woodley. I'm hoping to get out there before the tracks get covered up. Usually they're covered up by the wind, but maybe this time we'll be able to find the nest. I hope so. Let me know what happens. I will. And thanks for all your help. And I was supposed to relieve Palmer at 0400, but they never showed up, so we went looking for him. I wish we hadn't found him now. It wasn't too pretty. Snake bite rarely is. You think snakes did that? I've seen people bit before, and they didn't look like that. Man, those guys were torn all to hell. Well, we figure it was a number of them, not just one. I don't know. You can look for yourselves. Here's their Jeep up ahead. Let's pull up alongside, and we'll have a look. My God, there must have been 20 or 30 snakes here. And got a picture of this. I didn't think snakes traveled in groups. Well, they don't usually. The only time I've seen them do it is when they're trying to defend a nest. Wait a minute, back up here a minute. Easy. Recently fired. Probably from Palmer's gun. It was on the ground near his body. The whole clip had been fired. Do you want me to keep going? Yeah, let's see where these tracks lead. Well, let's hope they don't lead us to where it led those men. That makes two of us. Looks like the tracks lead into that mine shaft. Well, let's take a look. You coming with us? No, thanks. I think I'll stay right here with the Jeep. All right, let me borrow that flashlight of yours for a minute, will you? Sure. I thought the mine you were looking for had been filled in. Well, we won't know till we get inside. They may use those vertical air shafts. You mean we're going in there now? Well, sure, why not? Well, I don't know. I just thought... Uh... Oh, come on now. I was beginning to think you were pretty competent. down a couple of hundred feet. Wouldn't want you to fall in there. Get out of here! 
make it. I couldn't take another step. At least we found that den we were looking for. You know, you're crazy. Absolutely crazy. Or maybe I'm the one that's crazy. You know, I could be working in an office for normal hours and better pay. But no. I have to do everything the hard way. Well, I'll tell you what, I gotta go over to the county reporter's office to check out this mine. Maybe we'll catch a show, have a big steak. How's that sound? That's the least I can do for you. Las Vegas? Really? Really. something. Huh? I hear something. Well, it's probably just the wind. No, no, it's something else. All right, I'll go look. What is it? Snakes. Dozens of them all outside the tent. Tell Stroud that when I get her to the hospital, I'm coming over there with a sheriff, and we're going to find out what's buried in that goddamn mine of his. All right. Oh, doing your 
spring cleaning. What do you want, Delaney? I just came to watch the burning of Rome. I don't have time for your drunken antics today. Looks like you don't have much time left at all. But I told you, didn't I? I mean, they're not going to slap your hand this time. <laughs> you violated the Geneva Convention. My God, you think the Russians or the Chinese care about the Geneva Convention? Hell, they've got biological stockpiles that make this place look like a toy store. But we've got CT3. And they'll never get that. Nobody will. Oh, your precious CT3. That was going to win the war without firing a shot. <laughs> well, look what it did to those snakes. Now, you know that was an emergency as well as I do, Delaney. We had a leaking canister, no time for safe disposal. <laughs> and that's another joke. Your safe disposal. They dumped that stuff into the ocean, but what happens when the containers rush through? <laughs> you saw what happened to the snakes? Can you imagine what it'll do to sharks and killer whales? You worry a lot for a lush. I only worry when I'm doing something wrong. <laughs> and for the first time in four years, I'm not worried. I still have Fletcher's records. You don't think I'm burning them? You don't scare me with that anymore. He died four years ago. So you can't prove I was even drunk. It's just your word against mine. You're a lush. Everybody knows that. Now open the door. I'm sorry, Colonel, but I should have stopped you four years ago. I am ordering you to open the door, Delaney. I told you. You can't threaten me anymore. I've made my choice. Sheriff, what's going on around here? Oh, come in, Tom. Listen, I want you to meet uh, General Hinch. This is Tom Parkinson, the snake expert I told you about. How do you do? Hello, well, where's Colonel Stroud? Well, it looks like he shot and killed the medical officer and then took off. Delaney? Guard at the gate said he saw him leaving a little while ago with several gas canisters in his Jeep. We're trying to locate him now. I've flown in myself to suspend his command until we complete an investigation. Well, he's probably headed for that mine. We were heading out there ourselves. You want to join us? Yeah. Right. We've got to get those canisters back. Exactly what was in those canisters, General? From what Sheriff Yates has told me, it looks like CT3. What's that? Colonel Stroud used to be a major figure in the logistics of biological warfare, and CT3 was experimental, sort of his baby. The project was never completed, though, and the Colonel was transferred to our storage depot here. Yeah, well, what is CT3? Well, it's a new form of nerve gas designed to be dropped behind enemy lines where breathing it caused a, a manic behavior. Within a few hours, the enemy troops would be fighting and killing amongst their own ranks. And then our forces could move in easily and take over without firing a shot. Now, General Hitch believes that that's what the colonel may have buried in the mine. Well, it would certainly explain the behavior of those snakes, wouldn't it? I still don't see how it could affect those snakes when it's buried underground. Well, General, a mine shaft houses all sorts of desert life, and in this case, it just happened to have been a den of rattlesnakes. Ah, oh, here's my car. Harry! He must be inside the mine up there. Let's cover the area. All right, I'll head up this way. He's got a gun! Sergeant Yates, I want you to give it up. Forget it! 
it, Sheriff! Give me that thing. Crowd, this is General Hinch from ARCOM 36. I'm ordering you to come out of there. You're no colonel, you're no general from ARCOM 36. I know you, you don't fool me. You commies, that's your chief trick. Deceit in disguise! Damn it, he's got grenades. Move back! How's that leg feeling? Feels a lot better. The pain's almost gone. At least it feels a lot better than my stomach. Why is it they always try to starve you to death in a hospital? I did get to lie on a nice, comfortable bed, though. I'd almost forgotten what it was like. And you're not going to miss that desert air and that sleeping bag? No. Actually, I can't wait to get back home and breathe in a big lungful of good old L.A. smog. <laughs> Listen to the sounds of traffic and people. You know you're a hopeless case. I know. I guess the only thing I will miss will be you. I've gotten used to your crazy ways. Well, you know what they say about crazy people. You hang around them long enough, you get crazy yourself. <laughs> I believe it. I'll tell you what. I know this fantastic Chinese restaurant in L.A. where they serve seven-course dinners. And they don't care whether you're crazy or not, just so long as you're hungry. Does that sound good? Sounds great. Just so long as there aren't any snakes. Hey, I promise. There won't be any more problems. Mine's gone, the gas is gone, so are the snakes. I hope. <laughs> <laughs> 